through the last part of the story on the river of integration to explain how it works. So here's where we were before. Before, I, before she came in the office, she lived in what we called still water. What does it look like? Every one of us are the people in the raft. And we're heading down this river of life right into the rapids. Rapids are what we call pain. The issue is, you guys, we're all going to have pain. There's no choice. You're going to have pain whether you want it or not. Here's your choice, though. So if the pain in the rapid is about yay big, if we jump off the river because that looks scary, what does pain look like when we jump off the river? It gets bigger. When you run from pain, it never subsides. It's faster than you are. But if this is the size of the pain and I head straight into the rapid, it goes like this. But notice it doesn't go away. It never goes away. But you get to choose the kind of pain you get hit with. So if you're hitting it straight on, you're in moving water. Now there's, there's really strong opposites here. You've got those people who are in their head. I wish we had time to go on that one. Men are in their head typically. Women are in their body typically. Um, but here's the reality. Men don't get emotions. Women do. They're much more attached to what's going on. Men who run from fear by bottling it up, running into the man cave, are actually being dictated by their emotions more than their wives, who the men are then criticizing for having emotions. That make sense? <laughs> Good. Sounded OK to me. All right. Then the other part is rigidity and chaos. Every one of you came from a family that's going to be somewhere on the spectrum, either very rigid in certain things, or maybe really chaotic in other things, and maybe kind of in the middle on other things. Depending on what it was, your experiences, you will hold a core set of beliefs about fill in the blank. Maybe it's church, maybe it's uh, politics, maybe it's schooling, whatever it might be. Your core belief structures will be held by the experiences you had. The goal is to hit in the middle, to move into moving water, and to be vulnerable. Real quick, vulnerability means there's trust in the space. When I first met Sherry, I allowed myself to be vulnerable to the point to talk to her, give her undivided attention, then measure my return on investment by how much trust was in the space. If I trusted her, I grew my trust, and I created more vulnerability. If she trusted me, she grew her trust, and therefore she grew her vulnerability. There isn't anyone in the world that I am more vulnerable to than my bride. She knows more about me. I've opened myself more to her than anyone. My trust is the highest with my wife, but that's why the vulnerability is so high. But people who only know exposure, in other words, fix your being tied down, staked down, all fours, and have an Indian shoot at you from the top of a hill and you can't move, eventually they're gonna hit you, aren't you? That's exposure. You are completely exposed to the elements. When you jump off the river, when you run from pain, you run into exposure. You're no longer in vulnerability. Third, safe. Safe space versus familiar. Safe space is literally meaning that. But when we're in pain, we don't run to safe space. We run to what we know. We run to familiar, back to the addiction. That's why women who marry men who abuse them, because the women were abused as children, will marry the next man who abuses them. And then we'll bail them out of jail after they put them in the hospital because they go back to familiar when they're in pain because of the narrative they've been telling themselves. Okay. 